Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we've got my long overdue review of my Seiko Saab. Now, this one here, the model number is actually 035. There were a few others available. There was a black model available also, which I think was a 033. But this is the one which really took my fancy. This had been a long running watch for Seiko. This basically, I believe it was around since 2008 and running almost all the way up to 2018. And it's it's got a real cult status to it. It's one of these watches I wish I'd brought when they were cheaper because now they've been discontinued. These in the UK, you can't pick up a second-hand one of these for anything less than 400, uh, maybe even more than that. I've actually seen on Amazon one of these um, up for sale at 800 pounds um, new in the box. So basically they are really, it's like most things, once they get discontinued, everyone wishes they brought one. So I was lucky enough and got this one. And this is one which really took my fancy. I really prefer this to the black dials. I just think it's always nice to have a few cream dials or at least one cream dial in your collection. So let's have a look at that dial first. Let's see what it looks like. Now, I love, one thing I do like here a lot is the handset. As you can see, we've got nice bevel edges, really polished. One thing I would say Seiko do amazingly well is the polishing on their handsets. You know, we all know that they do really, you know, they're fighting well above their weight when it comes to their handsets. They are pretty damn amazing. We have this lovely polished center, um, beveling going on. But what's really nice is then, I don't know if we can see it, let's get it in the right angle. There we go. You can see we have this black spine running down the center of the hands. I'll try and get it. you can see it just there that's only intersected by their loom and again the loom is very good because it is Seiko they do a really good loom so the handset I think is really nice really good and it's a little bit different as you can see it also goes all the way out to the the minute track up here let me just uh, so let me just see there so you can see it goes all the way out to the minute track and that's no, it's spot on for me. The second hand is a little bit longer and it does have this really interesting little cut out here on the back of the second hand. The actual markers are applied as too is the Seiko uh, marking at the top there. I do like the minimal text on this, just the very classy looking automatic 23 jewel. But there is also on the um, our markers here, we do actually have a small spot of loom going around there. And date window with the same applied um, frame going around there as well. The actual minute track is on the chapter ring. And it just, it's got a very classy look, I think, to the watch. The actual um, crystal, I believe, is sapphire. Not really much anti-reflective coating, as you can see by the reflections I'm getting off my uh, lights in here. Now, what does make it more interesting is as you come out, we have a polished um, chapter, no, sorry, a uh, polished bezel. It's only when you look up when I magnify, I see, my God, there's so many marks on it. But I am a guy who likes to wear his watches. I don't stick them in saves and baby them. I do wear them. But the case body, the actual body of a watch is really interesting. You have multiple sort of like um, facets and angles going on here. I do like the fact that we have this raised section here and here from the main body. And you can see how it's got this really nice polishing around here, but yet brushed here. And I think it just, they didn't have to do it, but it does give it a, a better look. And it's a bit more unusual. Polishing all around the side, albeit lots of fingerprints. And as we come around to this side, we do have a signed crown. You can see these lovely edges on the body pad. I do like that. The crown itself is signed but it's not a screw down crown. Now you'll get some people saying, oh, you know, it's no good for diving. Well, this isn't a diver's watch. And also this watch still carries 100 meters of water resistance to it. What people have to remember is that a screw down crown has nothing to do with water resistance. It's just a, it just helps you from accidentally pulling out the crown if you are to take this, this watch in the water. 
So that's the only real difference. As we come around, we've got the bracelet, the end links, a little tiny bit of shake, but actually surprisingly good. Now it's polished on, uh, sorry, brushed on top, polished at the side, pin and collar, and we have this rather small clasp. It is machined and it presses down firmly. You do have to press both to allow this to release. But I say, there is only two levels of micro adjustment. Now, some people might quibble about this, saying it could do with more, but realistically, two is normally enough. The one criticism I would have with this is this big offset here. It is a rather large offset and it does nothing. So, Obviously, this is allowed for the um, bracelet on that side, but it's not ideal. To be fair, I never wear this watch on a bracelet. It really doesn't work for me. I wear it on this leather, brown leather strap, which I think suits it far better. Later on, I will show in a video, I'll show that actually on there. Now, when we zoom around to the back here, if I can get the camera to zoom. There we go. In. There you go. We have the 6R15, uh, 6R15 movement, which is slightly more upgraded from the standard Seiko 5 range you see. So it's actually an extra hour of um, power reserve. Plus, one thing I do find is they tend to be a bit more accurate. This one is surprisingly good. It runs for about four seconds, four to five seconds a day. So that I actually, I do appreciate because, you know, I, I can't stand a watch which runs anything over that. It, to me, it's just too much. So... There it is. Let's actually put it on the wrist so you can see. A quick wrist check. I'm wearing a Rolex OP39 Great Red. Now my wrist size is over seven, just over seven inches, around about seven and a quarter inches roughly. And I think that looks absolutely spot on size. It doesn't stick up too tall. It's let me actually measure this so you can see. I should have done this at the start of the video, but here we go. But there we go. The actual case sizes, don't know how I missed this, is, should be 38 mil. I think it's around about 11-ish. There you go, just over 11 and 44 lug to lug. Now, the bracelet size is 20. So... There you go. Let me put it on the leather strap and see what you guys think. But I think this wears much better on leather. So give me two seconds. Here you go. So here it is on the brown leather strap. Now, this, I think, just works so much better with the watch. I like the fact we have these cream loops here. Um, this strap actually was, I think, only £20. Um, I've done a review on this the guy who makes these straps for John. Uh, he does amazing straps, but there you go. So yeah, that's it on the leather strap. I'll put this on my wrist and you'll get an idea. I just find it's more comfortable. It just looks right, I think, on that far much more than the um, bracelet. Normally, I like bracelets on watches, but this watch just seems to suit um, the leather strap more, I find. What do you guys think? Do you guys think bracelet or the leather strap on this? I'll be intrigued to see what you guys actually think in comparison. But for me, this watch just works better on the leather strap. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to it now. All the best and stay safe out there. And I will see you at the next video. Okay, take care. Bye.